Hi, good evening. Welcome to Community Homeworks Workshop this evening. Um, we're glad you're joining us. If you're joining us virtually at home and live, um, we ask that you put your location down in the little comment section down below. That way we know where people are joining us from. Also, if you have questions during the workshop tonight, please put those in the comment section as well, and we will try to get them answered as quickly as we can. My name is Jason Byler. I am the education manager here at Community Homeworks. Like I said, we're glad you're joining us. We are back in person, so if you would like to join us in the classroom live and do hands-on stuff, make sure you sign up on our website. We do have a little register button there. It's rather painless. Um, it is free, uh, but you do have to register so that we make sure we don't have too many people in the classroom. We don't want to get overwhelmed. Instead, we're getting underwhelmed right now. Um, Community Homeworks is a nonprofit organization here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We have a mission to empower low-income neighbors to maintain safe, sustainable, and dignified homes. And so our whole idea is he, uh, here is we would like people to learn how to take care of their homes so that they don't have to hire somebody to hire uh, to be a contractor and do work on their homes or so if they do hire someone, that person um, realizes that they know what they're, that the homeowner is talking about and aren't taking advantage of them. So um, we wanna offer these classes as often as we can. If you have suggestions for classes that would be appropriate, that you, things you would like to learn about, please let us know that as well. You can send those to education at communityhomeworks.org and we will try to get those on the schedule for you. Tonight's workshop is um, wood window repair. Um, this is a great thing for our neighborhoods here in Kalamazoo that have the old wood windows. Those old wood windows tend to be, um, they will outlast last any new window that you could get. Um, and so we wanna try to preserve those and keep them uh, workable as long as possible. Our instructor for tonight is the one and only Sam Eubank. And Sam is a general contractor Correct. in this area, but also does stuff all over the, all over the place, all over West Mostly Michigan. Mostly around here. Mostly around yeah. here. I okay. try and stay around here. So. Okay. Um, so Sam's going, Sam has done a lot of stuff with wood windows in the past, and um, he also teaches our class on uh, weatherization. And so I, I thought it would be a good mix to do weatherization and uh, wood window repair as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Sam, what would you like to say about yourself? Well, first of all, just um, parroting on what you had said earlier, information is power. So if you do hire someone to come in, the more you know what's going on, the more you'll understand, the more vernacular you know, the, and um, the process of having somebody work for you would be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But hopefully you'll be able to tackle this job, uh, repairing your windows on your own, if that's something you wanted to do. All right, So great. And so I am, I would say the was the assistant teacher for tonight. And oh, I tonight, thought I was the assistant teacher for tonight. <laughs> We've all moved up a level. Okay. Um, and we're uh, gonna have to arm wrestle for who gets to teach the class. I guess <laughs> it'll be fine. I didn't know there'd be the physical games involved. But. Physical games. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that said, um, I've done a few uh, window re uh, repairs. I am not as well versed as the um, the, the person you guys were going to have in here, but I will do the best I can. I would say I have not made enough mistakes to become an expert yet. Okay. Uh, but I have a, a good working knowledge of, of wood windows. So, All right. Great. And please, if you got any questions, type them out. Uh, we'd love to hear, um, if anybody's watching live, mm -hmm. um, you know, anything that you have, uh, questions, um, or for something that we missed or, there's something that you want to know more about. So, mm -hmm. all righty. So first thing, we are concentrating our our um, tonight on double hung windows. I would assume. Mm -hmm. And what makes a double hung window? Maybe we can look over here real quick at our sample. And that this one fit in there, right? It does not. Okay. Double hung window. I'm just going to stand this up. Be a window that has what's called two sashes in the window oh didn't know that was in there yeah okay we got fanciness for you all right this is like the classroom is like upgraded so much more since the last time i was in here so. 
and the technology is great. So um, double hung window um, has a bottom sash and a sash is simply the, the window unit, the w actual window itself with the, um, with the different, with the glass in it. So bottom sash and a top sash. I don't know if this comes down, it does. It's so, a little rough like an old house. Right. I think our house might be out of square a little. Okay. We're all, I think nowadays everybody's a little out of square. That's probably um, true. And, and so I don't know if we'll be able to remove these. Um, but so what we want to do is go over how to repair the glass in the windows, how to remove the sash unit out of the windows, and both sashes. So... Um, so first of all, I'm going to go back over here to the table. So uh, there's multiple different kinds of windows out there. There's double hung. There are awning windows, which tilt at the top and come out, or hinge at the top and come out at the bottom. Um, casement windows, which hilt, um, hinge on one side and come out. Um, or open up on the side. There's slide-by windows. There's single hung windows where the top unit typically. So there's a multitude of windows out there, but right now we're just doing, we're gonna just concentrate on the double hung windows. Okay. So, and, and a lot of the old houses that I've seen, the top sash will be painted in place and then you only, you can only open the bottom. Right. And I don't right. know if that's just the ones that I've seen or if that's <laughs> that across is a, the board. That with... is a pretty common theme. And also you'll see a lot of the, the lower sashes painted closed too, okay. right? Where the window's not even operating anymore. Um, and so, um, first of all, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different reasons your window's gonna need repair. It could just be that the, the um, material called glazing that's holding the window in has come loose and they're are coming out and it's up um, or the you actually have a broken pane of glass or you want to install weather stripping on the sides or the windows aren't operating they're painted closed right. or they just need to be painted so um, uh, the uh, so you know you just the Sorry, the window is going to need to be uh, pulled apart, and that's one thing about that's nice about the windows, um, um, double hung windows, that they are made to come out. Right, they're made to be repaired and ma and maintained and then reinstalled. So, is that just the old wood ones, or are the new like replacement windows made to come apart like that too? To some some are, yeah, okay. and you can replace the glass on those okay. and. Uh, uh, typically, that's going to be an insulated glass and need to be done by somebody who's supplying the glass or under warranty work or something okay. like that. Okay. So, All right. um, but but even even those newer ones are are we, you can replace the glass. You probably can't replace the sash. Some things like that. Those yeah, are right. Harder. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, if the company's still in business, you should you actually can order replacement sashes. Okay. Um, if the springs have gone bad that make the window go up and down, you can a lot of times find um, the hardware for that. It just okay. takes a little harder, you know, just a little more deeper web search. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think what what if we start by taking out that sash, okay. taking out the sashes on that one though. Okay, sounds great. And you know, so you've got a lot of great tools here. I brought some of my own. Um, this is a tool that's used for just breaking the paint. Um, but first thing you wanna do is to get out this old, this old uh, lower sash unit. And I'm not sure how you guys have this installed here. Is this just this uh, screw? I think it's with screws. But okay. I'm not sure. So typically there'd be casing going up and around the sides of the window. And maybe we should talk about a few quick parts of the window. Okay. This is the um, the window stop, which is this piece of trim that goes all the way around. This is the window stool. This is the parting bead, which is the piece that separates the, the upper sash from the lower sash. Um, a little, a piece of wood in between right. the two. Yep. Okay. 
and uh, and that kind of holds them separately in their pockets or their grooves that they slide down. This is um, holding it in on the outside or on the inside. And then on the outside is the blind stop, which holds that um, uh, the outside of the upper um, upper sash in. So okay. And that's really not accessible. That the blind stop is behind the casing typically. So unless you have the casing off on the exterior, you're not going to be able to get to that. Okay. So the casing would be like the molding around the, exactly. the window. Exactly. Yep. Okay. The window trim. Okay. And yeah. on this one, we have we don't have trim on the inside because we don't have a finished wall on the inside. But also, we wanted people to be able to see what's going on inside the wall. Right. And yeah. it's hard to do that with a with right. plaster or drywall or something over that. Exactly. Right. Then, yeah, that, which is great. This gives you a real um, view of it. Uh, the other thing you have with these old windows are sash weights, and those keep the window up. They counterbalance, basically, the window, the weight of the window so it stays in place. And then there's these pulleys up here where that the sash, that the weights roll the sash cord um, right on. Okay. So... First thing you want to do typically is you would take a razor knife and slowly just where this trim is to the to the window stop here is just slightly cut that uh, paint paint bead because um, what can happen if you don't you can actually break off wood or pop pieces off and then you have more work to repair. Now, hopefully, everybody has the handouts. I don't know. They don't. No, no nobody we, has. We can, we can show them. We can show them the handouts on this on the screen if we need to. What we should talk about first of all is like a little personal safety. Personal I forgot safety. my safety glasses. All right. And um, also, um, uh, there is uh, typically these older windows have lead paint on them. Anything before 1978. Um, has a potential to have lead paint there. And that's something that um, you want to make sure um, that you are um, being aware of. So putting plastic down around your work area, not necessarily doing any sanding inside, um, even using a spray bottle to keep the dust down, a light okay. misting. Um, so the paint itself isn't the problem, it's the dust, the way it right. sounds like you. Right, right. So as long as the, the, but as you uh, take your apart your window, you're popping off pieces of the paint, you're creating a okay. little bit of dust. So okay. uh, uh, using an, an N100 minimum as your respirator or mask to have on, safety glasses are always good, uh, no matter what you're doing. And then... Um, so N95 is not enough. N95 works. Okay. The N100 is the minimum okay. standard for, for lead. So I'm guessing that we all know about the N95 now because of the exactly. COVID thing. Oh, right. But I, did, are the, the higher numbers finer? I think they're less. Oh, they're so, less. Okay. Yeah. So 95 so is, is N95 better. will work for lead. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Good to know. not a KN95, but an N95. An N95. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So. Cool. Or even having a respirator. If you're doing more than one window, you might want to invest in a respirator. Okay. And they'll have different little cartridges that go on. Um, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but why? Why does why does lead matter? Why do we have to worry about lead? lead what are affects, the dangers? Lead affects your nervous system, right? Okay. So it's great for paint. It was great for gas. Okay. It really, you know, made paint flow and stick to the woodwork. Um, and uh, but it is uh, especially for children under five uh, uh, can affect the nervous system. Okay. So yeah. All right. So and then make sure that when you're done, if you're not wearing gloves, make sure to wash your hands uh, before you eat anything or do anything else. And um, what I'm bad at is I kind of tend to touch my face too while I'm working sometimes, mm -hmm. and um, that's is something to be aware of. So. All right. All right. Cool. So, all right. Uh, that is not the full extent of, of, of lead safety. Of lead. Yeah, okay. there's more to, to that, but it's just cautionary to let everybody know. Okay. So let's uh, take this off. So I think you need a, you like? a straight screwdriver. Oh, God. All right. This one I've works. got a long one and a stubby one. I've got nothing in between. So typically, um, what would happen is you would take, take your knife, like I said before, 
or even um, get a putty knife in there after you've cracked it and you loosen, loosen this, um, the stop here on both sides. And if these have a screw with a little washer that is more atypical of what you'll find, but they are out there. Uh, typically it's just finished nails but nailing into this. And so you would start at the bottom um, if this had finished nails in it. And yeah, let's take off this bottom screw. So you'd start at the bottom and, and pry out with a, you would a pry out, knife or yep. something like that. Right. And typically there's going to be a buildup where, where the stool or the sill here, this is a stool or the sill, excuse me, the bottom sill. Um, there's going to be a buildup of paint right here, right? Okay. And so you would, you know, do a little um, putty knife action there so that you can get either, um, this is a very stiff putty knife. It's also known as a five-way. Get that in behind there and just start working it out, right? And then slowly work your way to the top. And um, you were saying that we should make off. sure to, to be gentle with it, though, because that, that wood can be kind of brittle. It can be, yeah. Okay. Can you get replacement absolutely. stops like that? So, yeah. So the, the on this particular window, this is a wider stop than normal. Okay. This is probably about two inches wide, maybe inch and three quarters. Uh, but that's a typically a, a profile. A, a typical stop is a profile that's still made. Okay. You just end up having to cut the, the um, coping joint up here. Okay. All right. So we've got the stop removed. We'll set that aside. And typically then there'll be a bunch of nails sticking out of the back right. of this, right? And if they're finished nails, it's easier to take a pair of pliers and pull them through. From the inside. From the, yeah, from the inside of the wood. Okay. Instead of um, trying to pound them back through like we were taught in. Right. You, you know, can pound them back through, but what that does is it tends to like blow out the wood on the side and then you have even more uh, things you need to, to um, putty and, and sand and repair. Okay. Is there a reason they would have used screws in this in this particular model? Is there a reason for screws other than... So, so screws make it just easier to, to work on, right? Okay. right? So easier so, to, to get it apart if you need to exactly. do any work on it. Knowing okay. that, that this window is going to need maintenance at some point in its life or it's going to have a broken pane of glass. Okay. It's going to... And so, um, yeah, it's just a little forethought. It's a little more expensive. And they actually make a screw that fits the this. Um, it's like an oval head screw that fits into these. Oh, washers. so we don't have the right screws? Is that what you're telling us? You've got you know replacement screws in there. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so once you have a stop off, then that means you can get your your bottom sash off, right? Okay. So I'm gonna. So just this. one. You don't have to take them both off. No. At this point. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, it depends on what the level of your repair is going to be, too, okay. right? But this I'm, is... I'm guessing normally those screws would be painted over, too, so you wouldn't be able to access those screw heads right. necessarily. Right, unless this is like a, you know, a varnished window or stained on the interior, okay. right? So, um, but once you have this out, you can simply just pivot this bottom sash, and you want to support it, hold on to it here, and then here's the... Um, a sash cord pocket and there's a little little uh, knot there and you can simply pull that out gently try and let the weight down okay. and typically there'd be wall here so it's not going to fall onto the floor and hopefully that won't make a loud clunk while we're working All right. and but this, if you have if you have if the sash cords are broken then you can't tie that knot no but you may want to if the sash cord is still sticking through, uh -huh. but it's not attached to the window, go ahead and put a knot in that anyways, okay. just so you don't, you know, depending on this, um, depending on the, the window frame, there's going to be a pocket here. Once you get the, the bottom sash out, there'll be a pocket here that will give you access to the weight. Okay. So... While this um, window has the fancy screws uh -huh. for access to there, I don't see a pocket in here. Oh, there it is. It's up a little higher, I think. Because I think that's yep. one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we could show. Okay, cool. And I don't All know right. if we've ever had that out or not. Um, I did talk to I talked to somebody who, who uh, lives in Vine neighborhood a couple weeks ago, and she said that 
they had replaced some of the um they had replaced some of the weights in the windows in her house mm -hmm. but the the framing was different in and the that weight went all the way down to the floor so the interesting it was framed in a way that that little pocket was all the way to the all the way to the floor <laughs> so they had to reach down in and try to fish it out wow so i don't know were they able to get it out i i think so that's but i'm not yeah. positive uh, that's a new one for me okay right. you haven't seen that so no, that's I not haven't. a normal one no no okay. and yeah sorry okay um i i went down a rabbit hole a bit, that's yeah, right now i the way i am um so typically, then the next thing is to remove the parting bead, right? Okay. This one is a little more difficult. Okay. Um, and what typically has to happen, where you're talking about how the upper sash is like typically painted in place, mm -hmm. um, this is where you would need to take these tools, these brakes and the putty knives and do your best to um, first cutting this where the, 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 when the sash and the parting bead meet uh, with your razor knife and then either taking putty knives to get in here, moving all the way around the three sides, possibly up in here, possibly on the exterior if you can reach around and then get this upper sash to move. Okay. Now, parting bead is, um, you can still find that at, for sale even in big box stores. All right. We crooked on that one, or I'm gonna just let that. It's slightly out of square. Ooh, and I don't know if we if this is designed to have the parting bead out. You mean as far as our as your far demo as our, window? Our demo window. Yeah. I, I think we can do whatever we want to it. No one's gonna come and tell us that we did something wrong. <laughs> the homeowner here is not is not gonna care. But um. So um, I would say more, okay, now we need, so here's the, uh, typically I'll use a pair of duck build vice grips. Duck build vice grips. Right, and um, I knew I was forgetting something to bring with me. I've, I've got vice grips, but I don't have the duck bill. They, um, they work very well at taking out the parting bead. Oh, okay. Is there something that we can use that would? Well, any kind of a wide, you can use pliers. But they're right? going to, they're going to, they're going to damage and, it even more. Okay. Right. So we need something with a wider. Right. A wider I don't know how far we want to go here with this. Okay. But usually if you can get this all the way down, um, get the, the sash all the way down. These cords are a little short for that. But, oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're running into. But their weight's off of there. Hmm. It might just be that it's never been opened okay. since we have it here in the classroom. But, but Once you get that all the way down, then you can take off one side of the parting bead, mm -hmm. right? And this is basically a piece that is a half inch by uh, approximately one inch or inch and a quarter, right? Okay. Um, and so it's replaceable. Right. And sometimes they're nailed in, right? Uh, but most often they're just friction fit in there. So, once so they'd the, be nailed through the through the face on this through side. Through the face on this okay. side, yeah. Because mine at my house has finished nails through the parting bead into the top sash. Oh, to keep it closed. To keep it closed. Yeah. All right. So and that, that makes it a lot harder to to you know cut that <laughs> cut through that paint and, and get that top one right. operating again. But so oh, I see what's going on here. This is so this sash cord, whatever oh. this cord is, very thin. Uh huh. And so on this side, it's off the pulley. It looks like somebody replaced it with clothesline. Yeah. I was going to come to this side, but this side you can't see that. Well, it's nice that we have a we have a real live um, Open problem window. because you know that nothing ever goes as planned in these things. Oh, look at that. So, and then the other thing is it's too short. It's too short. Right? Okay. Well, we can replace those if you want, Sam. Well, so when it's too short like this or when it's not all the way down it's more likely i'm going to break the parting bead oh, okay right which is not terrible right but well we have the benefit that we could reach inside this wall too sam so if we have to we could cut the well we could just cut the the cord we could right on both sides well we don't need to do both sides 
Um, it's up to you. I don't want to. Well, someone's going to have to fix it. That's right. But we've got <laughs> we've got sash cord here. Right. We've got um, you know, I think we've we've got a lot of tools, but not a duck build vice grip. <laughs> I could run home again, well, but that's I've got it happen. out in the van outside, but all right. So this is not coming out. All right. So I'm gonna cut this. Okay. Do you want me to catch the weight? I'll I'll, so it, I'll yeah, that would be so great. So it doesn't crash down and hit the hit the sash that's sitting just below it. All right. Okay. And then are you gonna tie a knot in or are you gonna just We're gonna just go ahead. Since we have access to it, we'll let it fall. Okay. There's what the weight looks like. Are there different size weights? There are. Okay. Right. So how do you know what size you need? Um, there, <laughs> there Sorry, is a computer, a... or there is a, a way to compute that. Okay. Yay. Okay. Parting beat down. Oh, nice. Um, that came out way too easy. This is, yeah, this is way too easy. So nothing broke, but I think it's been out before. It's okay. loose enough. Okay. Right. So actually, let's keep it. That's the top there. Okay. So you're trying to orient it the same way for... Right when you put it back together is this like when you're working on your car where you should take pictures of everything and that way you can refer back or doesn't that really matter well i, I that's a good idea okay we you could, want me to hold that yep we're done okay. oh so that's out we'll just that's put out. it down and we'll we can take it over to the table to put new well we don't need to do anything to that we're going to do okay. something to the sash weights okay all right so you just want this out of the way for now yep okay awesome okay we have a question so the question is, where is a good place to buy these supplies in Kalamazoo? Good question. Very good question. Yes. Yeah. So it depends which supplies you're getting, I'm guessing. Right. Because some of this stuff is available at the hardware store or at the big box store. Yep. Like Menards or Lowe's or one of those. Right. But then there's some that is going to be more specialty, right? Right. So um... like I'm, I'm guessing you can't go into Lowe's or Menards and say, I want a, I want a window weight. No, but you could go in and to a junkyard and say, "Hey, do you is there sometimes?" Because people will take these in to for scrap, oh. and I have found weights in a, a junkyard, okay, or somebody with a boat, right, who are using it for an anchor. A or boat something. anchor, I've yeah. seen that as well. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, does the uh, what's the salvage place downtown on Edwards? Um, the uh, why can't I think of the name? Chupan? No, the the uh, oh the, um, yeah. The, Okay, well, it'll come to us, but it'll be like at seven. Right. All right. Um, so uh, I'm wondering, they, they would probably Heritage, have these. Heritage, Heritage Company. Yes. Yeah, I bet Heritage you they would do. would probably have these yep. as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, but finding pulleys, let's say you're, so sometimes these pulleys get rusted or they're painted mm -hmm. um, bad, and then, you know, you need to get a new pulley. So that might be something you have to buy online. So, okay, so maybe Heritage, um, maybe, maybe online. Um, yeah, but as far as like sash cord, you can get that at you can get that at the hardware store. Yep. Um, what else might we need? Uh, if you break the parting bead. Yep. That that's, should that's I've I've purchased that at box stores before. Okay. Yep. Okay. And um, and uh, the thing that we'll be getting to is glazing, uh, compound, mm -hmm. and that and um, for the window and. Um, everybody sells the DAP 33 glazing, um, but it, it's probably not the best to work with. Okay. Right? That's, that's what I'm coming, the consensus I'm coming to from the research I've done. Okay. So we'll talk about that more when we get to yeah. the, get to the glazing, but okay. All right. Cool. So, and we can try hopefully to Hopefully that answers the question that. Right. Yeah. So one, one last thing is, so like if most of the time these, um, pulleys are just friction fit in here. Oh, right. interesting. So I assume can, they'd be they'd be fastened in with, you know. Oh, so you can look at so this one. These ones aren't going to come out until they're broken because the pin oh. of the pulley goes through past the opening of the. But you couldn't. You pulley. wouldn't be able to see that from outside. You wouldn't. But if that that's broken, that might need to be just taken off in pieces and then a new pulley put in. Okay. Right. So, okay. And there are pulley covers that you can buy out there for the wintertime. Pulley covers. They're 
Oh, either because, magnetic, right? So you get because they, you get air through there, right? And so you can put a little cover over that. So one of the not, challenges of, with these old windows is because you have this this pocket here where the weights are, right? That there's you can't have insulation in there, right? Or else yeah, the weights don't work anymore. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. I hadn't thought about that. All right. All right. Okay. So we've got this one over here. Should we try and and do some glazing? How are sure. we doing for time? Let's do some glazing. We've got. Okay. We've got a half an hour, a little less than half an hour. So, all right, maybe you can work on your um, sash cord knots. Oh, or not? I was, all right, or not? Or not? Or not? <laughs> all right. All right. So, typical three over three window. Thanks. Three over three. All right. Okay. Sash. Sorry. And the the one that we had, the one that we had from the other. Um, there is a name for that, but I can't recall. You right don't now. Really recall what this is, right? It's just three. It's three, and then a fix, and then a that. fix at the right. bottom. And I yeah. think mine and my house are three over three at the top, and then a, a just a single at the bottom, right? In my house, so. So and um, and then my friend PJ's, mm -hmm. um, who we tried to convince to come, but right. maybe next time. Next uh, time, he PJ. just he just has. You know, single glass, top and bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, is that something that was like, oh, the more expensive ones have more pains, or just, yep. oh, this during this time frame they did more pains, and this time frame they didn't? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think it just meant when you know, uh, what was the style of the house, okay. who the builder was, what the what the typical okay. was going on. So, all right. Um, this is pretty rough. This window, with this piece here, I don't know if this camera's on or not. Um, now it is. Okay. Look at that. All right. Thank you, Kaylin. And um, and another thing is that you can see the the on the edges of the glass. This glass is like cut really tight to fit in there, right? Okay. And so if you're getting a replacement glass, you could get it cut an eighth inch smaller. Okay. To uh, almost a quarter inch, just depending on how big the glazing, the bead is on the other side. And so this is, uh, if this window is, is broken already, like you can see how this is, there's a, a piece of glass. Of that one. Yeah. Uh, putting tape on it while you're working on it just helps keep it. If it does break, then your the shards stay together. Okay. Right? So that's why the, that's why the tape. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Um, and so typically you'll remove the glazing. Um, or if you have old glazing that is dried out, you're you're going to chip it out and. Um, so the glazing is like the putty stuff that holds the. It is holds, putty. Yeah. Okay, it's putty. Yep. And so this, I don't know if this is the window to use for this, but uh, trying to get in to remove anything you can to get the glass out. Okay. Well, we've got the tape on. If you need to break it. I don't want to break. I want to reglaze it. Oh well, we have another. We have we do have one more paint. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that's a different size. <laughs> it would be Murphy's Law would say it would be a different size, right? Right. So I think just if I can get this corner here loose. Okay. Um, you want me so to hold I need, it or well, I need right? a little more scraping. Okay. Right. Um, as exciting as this is. So is is the is the glazing or the putty different than caulk? Yes. So you okay. want to use glazing okay. and not caulking, even though this is a a, a window glazing latex caulk. Uh -huh. I think um, an oil-based uh, uh, glaze or putty for this is okay. the way to go because it takes longer to dry, mm -hmm. um, but then it typically lasts a lot longer and doesn't okay. dry out over the life of it. Okay. So, so the so the one that comes in the in the can that you just showed us. Is going to dry, might dry out, and, and not be as as e easily work. Right. Yeah. I don't. It doesn't have the long track record. Okay. Um, you know, glazing started out just being raw linseed oil and chalk. Okay. Right. And um, so there are still some out there that 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 have that um, that are are raw linseed oil. Cool. Um, but I should keep going on this. Sorry. While we talk. We we can't talk and work at the same time. Uh, it's like. <laughs> I used to be able to, but as I've gotten older, I have less on the multitasking. You need to concentrate more, right? There's fewer brain cells. Oh, maybe that's it. So I'm just trying to be careful not to um, touch the glass. And I don't know if you have a scraping tool. 
Um, but that can also be effective with this, and that's just like a little hook scraper. Okay, we we do have one of those, but I think it's up in our other bin in the painting bin. And I could go get that if you really like it. I think we're okay. I think, okay. We're, I think I'm getting this here. Okay. Sorry about the. Hopefully that's not. Do we have a trash can? You're doing great. Oh yeah, a trash can would be nice, wouldn't it? So just kind of working this out, you can kind of see that there's some glazing down below stuck in there, which is great. You want to, you want that glazing in the window. Now, should we assume that the, that, that, that part, the, the dust that you scraped off of there, should we assume that that's lead, lead dust? More or than likely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just going to take this and turn the window over on there. Corner. Okay. And you're not going to lick that. No. Okay, and I'm going to try not to put my hands in my mouth. Okay, so you think maybe we've got enough scraped out of there now? I think you got to come here a little bit. So this is what dry glazing looks like. And that's, um, you know, depending on the product, it's going to last um, 30 years or possibly 20 years. And if you make sure you keep paint on here um the longer the glazing is going to last right okay so the less likely you have to do this again i'm going to ask a, a obscene question it's not obscene um so you're talking about an oil-based oil-based glazing does that mean you would need to paint the window with an oil-based paint as well um or can you use latex paint over you can use latex paint over the that. yep okay um I think um, using a uh, oil-based primer and then maybe a latex finish coat okay. is the way to go. Okay. Um, and um, but you could definitely use. You definitely want to. Oh, Jason. Still doesn't want to come out. No. Let's see, this side's coming. It's nothing like unscripted. Nope, this is what we're all about, right? Yeah. You're getting it though, Sam. I can see it. Right. Is there anything I can do other than give you a cheering <laughs> cheering advice? You're doing great. Thanks. You're doing great. Those of you at home should be cheering as well, saying you're doing great. <laughs> Sam needs all the all the encouragement he can get trying to work with our with our old window here that has the wrong probably the wrong size glass. Yeah, I learned the hard way um, that that whole rule of, of going an eighth of an inch smaller because I replaced one and it broke as I was putting it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. All right. So you did yay, a great job. Look at that. Out. All right. So uh, this is like 332nd single layer glass. Okay. Interesting. So it comes in different thicknesses too. You can get, uh, or single strength glass. Okay. Right. Uh, you can get a little thicker glass that would be an eighth inch thick, and okay. it's what's called double strength glass. Okay, is available out there. All right. So, does it really make that much difference? It's double the strength. So it is actually <laughs> double. The, I, I was afraid you were going to tell me that it was, it wasn't any more any better, but it, they just call it double strength. Okay. So, um, so if we had more time, right, right, we would take our our scrapers and would go around all this perimeter. Okay. Right, and get all the old paint and um, glazing compound out of here. Okay. Right, and get it prepped, uh, maybe a little bit of sanding if necessary, uh, just to like, because when you're scraping, a lot of times you're like uh, digging into the wood and that too. Okay. And then you would do whatever other prep you're doing on the window, and then I would um, prime, either prime this area, right? Okay. This is called the. Um, Oh, the glazing bead here, right? Um, uh, would prime it, or uh, some people like to use raw linseed oil. Oh, and okay. on just there. paint it, paint it with raw linseed, linseed oil. Linseed oil, but you, then you got to wait a little longer for that to dry. Okay. And anything that's oil, linseed oil, all that just takes longer time in the prep. And while you've got this window out and all that, you need to have something temporary in your window because this is not like an um, 
unless you're taking the window in and out and replacing the parting beads and the stops and all that, um, you know, your window's open. So a lot of times people will cut a piece of plywood to fit in there and just uh, put some nails, either tacking it in or some small screws to hold it in place okay. while the work's being done. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so you would we would scrape and prep this and by uh, either putting the primer, and it could be a latex primer, it could be an oil primer, that just keeps the oils from the, the glazing being sucked into the wood because the wood's going to want to suck up all that, um, all the oils out of the glazing. So, okay. We'll just, where, where do we get glass? Oh, so um, Gale's Hardware sells glass. Okay. Um, and you can get it cut and, to and size there? You can. Okay. So you can either bring in the sash. Okay. And they'll... They'll measure and cut it. You can bring in um, measurements. Okay. Um, and um, and uh, I think, but there's, I when I stopped by there today looking for some parts for class here, uh -huh. they're two to three weeks out. With getting? Uh, with somebody, with gl window glazing. Right? Oh, if for somebody to, else doing it. Right. So if okay. you were to bring your window in, okay. they would have it for a couple weeks and prior to you getting it back. Okay. So, so once again, if you're... You would have the, your temporary window, your your right. plywood over your window for right. two to three weeks. Right, and it okay. hasn't even been painted yet. Right, right, and that's going to take a few more days or okay. weeks, depending on what your work, okay. what what time you have to do. Right, I'm guessing the the um, the Ace Hardware on on Park and what is that Park and Westage. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing they would be able to do it as well. Right, um, and some of those other places. I don't know. Um, does do the big box stores cut glass for you or do you have to good question i have okay. not had one done there. yeah i know they cut plexiglass for you okay but, i'm you know. guessing someplace like j and j glass would be able to do it as well sure but it, are they still open i henderson I glass so. and portage okay um or you can get the tools okay and cut glass yourself okay cool and, I, and i've got i have friends who are really into the historic reproduction or historic oh. elements and they have wavy glass they get wavy glass so you can yeah. still get wavy glass well they have salvaged it from people uh. taking out their windows and so they'll uh -huh. they'll hold on to it and cool they've developed a technique for cutting the glass okay. so it's not easy to do i'm sure so i'm sure right yeah, some so. of mine have wavy as well but some just have uh, flat all right so I'm just going to scrape this a little bit. Um, give an idea of what's going on here. And then we'll knock it out. So I've seen conflicting reports as to whether you want to paint that or not. Um, some people say that you don't want to paint that, that bead because um, then the glazing does become more of a part of the window hmm. and sticks in there better. It doesn't pop out as much. But then I've also heard people say, like you did, where you don't want it all getting absorbed into the into the sash. Right, right. Because, um, yeah. So I, I think I'd be of, if I had the time to do this, I would probably put rot the linsu de oil on. Okay. Because I know that's going to condition the wood. Okay. Right. And these are, you know, most of these old wood windows are from old growth trees that are had been hundreds of years old prior to becoming your you know, your your friendly sash your friendly sash and um so with with you said you were helping pj with some of these yeah on pj's house are you what are you doing on the on I, the windows PJ's there? pj's doing all that that's why oh I, so you don't I, even I, know what pj is doing pj is so we have um he's installed a couple new windows or okay we've, we've installed a few new windows there but he is refurbishing the rest, the other half of the house, with okay. the existing windows, or taking cool. taking some of the windows that we replaced um, and uh, refurbishing those and reinstalling them. Okay. So, so is he doing? Is he? I'm guessing he's needing to do some window glazing then. Yeah, he'll be doing some glazing. He'll be doing some. So is he uh, doing wind seed or is he doing? I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah. PJC, you should have been here tonight. We would instead of escaping to Detroit or wherever. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get this loose so you can imagine us like dusting this off vacuuming this up into our HEPA filters okay and um, and then wiping everything down 
um, and um, and prepping everything. But I'm not sure if that's going to go back in there. But I'm gonna tap this out one more time. Do you want a wet rag or something? I can get you that. that I, yeah, let's try that just okay. to wipe up the dust. You're so helpful, Jason. I really appreciate it. Now, in my prepping for this class, I read about um, um, some people will take the glazing compound and put it, put a small amount of it on the uh, the bead here first. Um, and um, before you put the window in, I typically have not done that. The only the reason to do that is to help stop airflow coming around from the outside around the window. So I don't know if you heard that, but it's all right. The people at home heard it. Okay. And um, and Kaylin heard it. I'm hoping Kaylin turned off my mic while I was getting the water because you know what that sounds like. <laughs> We're just here to move water around. That's what our purpose on Earth is. That's what it is. All right. So it looks like there's an old like uh, glazing point. Oh, the, right. The uh, sticking out there, and that might have been part of the. Uh, okay. Well, you, I think you pulled some others out already too, didn't I you? I may have. So. And these are the old ones that are like diamond shaped. Right. Now we need our pliers again. Pliers. Do you want needle nose? I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that should work if you got them. So what a glazing point is are these little so you're gonna love metal these. tabs that actually hold the piece of glass in in the window. Look at those cool wow. pliers, aren't like they fancy? Doing surgery. Right. Oh, and you can see what the old one looked like. It's just the piece the diamond shape there that they were able to slide into the window or into the the bead there to hold the glass in place very cool so i think now can you since that's an old um glazing point can you sell that on ebay or anything <laughs> i think it make fine jewelry <laughs> so so right now then typically you would test fit your glass which this is just, it still doesn't fit you know, Maybe we should maybe we should try that other piece that we have here. It might be bigger. I mean, smaller, <laughs> smaller, not bigger. We don't want it bigger. Same thickness. Nope, we got the same problem. That one but looks a little, little better. A little better. Okay, so we're in. We're in. So we're good. I'm gonna pull it back. All right. So, what I was talking about before was um, some of the research I did was putting the. Uh, glazing on the exterior stop here of the be of the bead, oh, okay. and then setting your window into that. Oh, okay. Right, and that's so it's not right way. against the wood. It's got a little right, a little right. cushion there, and it's also better air sealing. Okay, right, because you're sealing the outside too. Right, that makes sense. All right, so once you get your glass in place, uh -huh. um, then we'll take the glazing points, and um, there's a slight little like stirrup there stirrup is that the right one i'm not sure sounds good okay and then you press your glass tight and then you take your putty knife i brought multiple you did and you hold hold the glass down and simply slide it in and work it in there right um one thing to note it to know that is that you want to make sure, if possible, these are a little big for this window or this bead. The, um, oh, they come in different sizes? They do. Cool. And so this one is like sticking past the parting bead, so it's going to be noticeable from the outside. Ah, uh, I see. Right. And if you have a big piece of glass, like if we were working on the that, that bottom sash on this other window, mm -hmm. where you have a bigger piece of glass, you just want to make sure that when you're pressing things down, that you're just pressing the exterior of the glass because I you can like push in the middle of the glass and that you can break the glass. That I way see. Too. Okay. So there's different sizes. Right. So this one is just 
you know, and that's probably why they were using that diamond one, which now lost. There goes our eBay money. Right. Um, huh. Those look bigger than these. Okay. All right. We have another question. Let's hear the question. We appreciate the question. We do. Okay. The question is, how long should I estimate it would take a totally inexperienced person to replace cords and weights. Could it be done in a day? Uh, glasses intact, probably wouldn't need to repaint much. How fast do you work, Good. Sam? <laughs> I'd estimate like more than a day. A day, I mean, if, you, if you're just replacing the weights, it's and getting the, and the sash cords. right. So if you have to take the casing off to get to the weights, right, um, you know, and then you know, pop pop those pieces of trim off uh, the two sides, um, and um, and if you're doing that upper sash too, so then you're popping off the stops and the parting bead. So that you know, and you've not done it before. Um, I would say the first one might take you, you know, six hours, um, uh, depending on how fast you, or and meticulous you want to be. Um, but I think subsequent, if you're doing more than one, you would obviously get faster the more you do it. You don't know what to expect with your windows because the first time you're doing one, I mean, you're you're learning what your windows, you know, how your windows are, what they're about, right? Exactly. What style you have and all that. Mm -hmm. Great question, Liz. Thank you for thank you for asking. Um, and and I mean, with in my experience, also it's a it's so much of it is trying to find like oh how long is it going to take to break through the seal of the of the paint? Right. How many you know, layers? Are how on many there? layers are there? How how dirty is it inside there? All that kind of stuff can can right. really change the amount of time it takes. And uh, you know. Um, and then figuring out what the right amount of pressure is to use to pop things off. And then what's your, you know, before you even start, you're setting up plastic, you're getting things ready. It's all in the prep work, right? Okay, so you put you put four um, glazing points in yep. so far. Are you going to do more or is that? I am not. Is that it? What about with a window that is like the like the other one we saw over there? It is just one big piece of glass. You're still just using four? So I do the corners. The and corners, then, yeah, okay. To start with. Okay. So that's all nice and tight up against the, the uh, you know, as long as hopefully you have a nice flat scraping. Okay. And then um, my, I would say probably somewhere around eight to ten inches. Okay. Would be, so like that one would be one in the middle and maybe two on the bottom evenly spaced. Okay. You know, and two on the top and one on the other side. All right, so, cool. But this is this is holding in place, um, nice and tight. And I don't know who's going to work on this next. So, right, right. So this that's a demo window. So right. We could put another one here in the top and the bottom, but okay. I think for what we're doing is unnecessary. So we're going to. So this um, has been used for a while. Okay. This is um, the this is the putty. Right. So the glazing, oops. glazing. What's it called? Glazing. Compound glazing, putty glazing, I, just glazing. Yeah, window glazing. Window it's glazing. A, it's a putty. It's a putty. And the, I don't know. If you can look inside here. This is mm. fairly old, and you can see there's chunks, right? And it's and it'll never. Those chunks will never get soft again. Oh, right. okay. And so, so for, before we do the next class, we need to get some new mm -hmm. glazing. And this is I. Uh, this is usually where I put on some nitrile gloves. Okay. Right? Because you want, really want this soft and like clay like, right? Okay. Like you are making those snakes or worms oh, with yeah. clay, right? Um, softer than Play Doh, but. Um, and so you get it out, and it's going to be messy from here on out, but you got that right. We do. Right. So well, this. You, you do. Uh-huh. I'm glad that they can't see what you're doing right oh, now. Oh, sorry. I... No, I, I was glad because it looked <laughs> it looked a little gross there for a while. But this is something yeah, like so this is like stickier than it needs to be. Okay. Um 
But this linseed. is a linseed oil based. It is not linseed. It oh, is it just is. oil based. This is yeah. just oil based, which is why you want the nitrile gloves because you don't really want the. Yeah, it just keeps it from getting all over your hands oh, okay. and messy. And this should not like be sticking to me this okay. much, right? Um, so a, a good. I appreciate you taking one for the team here, compound. Sam. Um, so you get it, get it softened, get it, and then you want it to just like make a worm. And, oh, see, it's so sticky. Eh? Okay, so is this is the stickiness because of the age of it or because of the product itself? A little of both. I a little think. of both. Okay. Yeah. So before class, you were telling me that that um, this this thirty three <laughs> glazing thirty three um, is not necessarily the best stuff. That it's probably the most common it is, type of glazing, but it's probably not the best. I, I think, oh, interesting. They're, you're you're doing it differently than I did because. Mine wasn't this sticky when I <laughs> right. <laughs> so usually you can just like take it and like have a worm of it, right? Okay. And you just like put it in with your hands, or have a putty knife and go whoosh, 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 with and your putty knife, down in. right? So okay, I I am I'm going to be out of commission for a second here, but okay. um, and you just want to get it pressed in tight to the glass and up tight against the beading. And you're just trying to minimize the amount you put on. Or just having the right amount. Um, so you were suggesting a different product, uh, Sarco brand, I think you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we didn't look that up to see where we can get that in this area, but right. um, S-A-R-C-O. Is it two, two A's? Two A's? Oh, it I'm might be sure. two A's? Yeah. We'll look in the book. Okay. So I'm no, gonna... it's just one. Okay. S-A-R-C-O. Okay. Yeah, and they have two different products. Multi-glaze and dual glaze. Right. The multi-glaze is, so they, you know, if you have steel windows or something, I think that, that multi-glaze would work on steel and wood. Okay. And, um, so you know that, that lots of homeowners, you know, do things as well as they can. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, if they don't know any better, they do what they, what they know. Right. Um, so I've seen people use, you know, silicone caulk or something like that on windows. What, what's the problem with that? Um, it'll fail sooner. Okay. And, um, you know, a lot of silicone is not paintable. Right. right? And um, then if you ever have an issue of getting the window out, it's, it's uh, hard to scrape. Okay. So, so you just might end up making more work for yourself that way. I see. Right? That makes sense. So, and, um, so Sam brought this, this book along. I'm going to show yes, people. Thank you. Yes, I've got to clean oh, my look. hands up. <laughs> Old windows in depth. Oops. Where we go? Where we go? There we go. Old Windows in Depth uh, by Scott Austin Sidler. Sidler, um, and he says this is an excellent book. I haven't I haven't looked at it yet, but um, I'll try to get a copy of it for Community Homeworks as well. Okay. That's PJ's book. This is PJ's book. Yeah, Thank you, so, PJ, for letting us borrow your book. And um, I don't know. Maybe Sam didn't ask you. Maybe he just borrowed I it. Did you did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he also has a. Um, website called craftsman blog craftsman with an s blog it's all that's all one word so i okay. don't know if we can put a link up for that and okay. there's a lot of videos on on his website this is scott austin siddler's or siddler's mm -hmm. website okay. yeah he cool. is a uh, window restorer down in florida and so he will sell you all the products you need to florida um, man yeah. sorry <laughs> i shouldn't have gone there but i did I, I try and stay off of Twitter. So I think there's a Florida man account. I'm sure there is. All right. All right. This should be good enough. I just I just note there's always a, a lot of really interesting um, news headlines that start out Florida man. Exactly. My apologies. 
So then once we have, see, I've been wanting to use this. Okay. Oh, yeah. So once you have the putty in there, you usually can, if this is in good, all right, you've taken your worm and you've put, in the, put the putty in with your knife. Scrape it off. And then you should, if it's a good putty, you can help. Nope. So if it's a good, good glazing compound, you can just take your knife and hold it at a 45 degree angle and just slide right along that. And like shave it off. It just shaves right off. Okay. Yep. And then you pull that up and you put that in and you start working on the next, right? Okay. And the tool you're using now is not a regular putty knife. This is a, a special mm -hmm. uh, glazing tool or something, right? Right. And I've not. I think this is supposed to be so you can do this. Right? Oh, that looks nice. So that cleans that up. You come in here, and it didn't get a good cut in the glass. But I see what it should be doing. That's pretty right. cool. So then you've got that that bevel that you're going for. Uh huh. And then you clean up. Sorry, we're we're working with with materials that we shouldn't be here tonight. Hopefully people um, can find some putty that isn't so sticky. Well, I'm going to want to come back and do this class again. Oh, OK. okay now. So Why, because of the sticky putty? I just like be a little more prepared. Oh, well, so. I we kind of sprung this on you, didn't we, Sam? Well, I mean. We actually had know. somebody else who was planning to co-teach with Sam, and they um, ended up um, having COVID in the house. so. We decided not to have them come in, but I appreciate him being willing anyway, and I appreciate Sam being willing to step up and be our primary instructor. So, well, thanks, man. It's, I love being here. So, and I appreciate you guys bearing with me, and always love projects you got going. All right, so this you want to get off as much as this extra putty as you can, right? because it's oil and it's all over your glass. We had some, uh, uh, there's a um, oh, product called whiting. We were talking about mm -hmm. chalk dust. Chalk dust. Um, and some people have used um, drywall joint compound that comes. As a powder. As a powder. And to, you just sprinkle it once you have all the glazing done. You sprinkle it on the window and it will like absorb the oil off of there. Okay. So, all right. So this glazing tool I know you can buy at hardware stores. Oops, and I just dug Nobody it. saw it. Nobody dug saw right it. into that. Um and then the hardest so this this is kind of the easiest part to do on the glazing is the straight runs. Okay. Um what's difficult is the corners. Okay. Right, because we're this next uh, bit of glazing is going to join up there. You want a nice crisp corner in there, at a nice mitered or forty-five degree joint. Okay. And so I kind of like this. That tool. Yeah. So we've got a good tool, but we we need to get better better glazing. So I'm just going to kind of go in here and just try not to butcher this too bad. See, I think that looks real nice, what you did there. So you can keep working this. The glazing is going to stay soft for um, uh, quite a while. Uh, but you do want to try and work all one one uh, piece of glass at once, right? Right. So if you do have to take a break, it's better. And you've got multiple windows to do, get one done. And then uh, take a break, then don't leave it. To dry because they're not going to want to um, tool the same. I see. So that'll work. Oh, you know what we need to do? You can help PJ with some of these and do some short videos, and we can put those online instead. <laughs> that way, PJ is getting his windows fixed up too. Right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So now that you've got your glass in and it's glazed, mm -hmm. you 
you got to wait for the and you can uh, you want to let this dry. Okay. I think the glazing should dry for a few hours before you start wiping on it. If okay. you're not using the the joint compound or the wiping, uh -huh. um, but then the glazing also needs to dry before you can start painting it. Okay. Right. So you're you're um, depending on the glazing you get, it's either going to be two or three days, it could be a day, or it could be a couple of weeks if you wow. get the raw linseed oil okay. and that. So just take into account the the amount of time this takes there are latex like this and some other products out there that dry faster and so that gives you the advantage of being able to paint that day or the next day um but i don't from my understanding is the latex products are going to dry out faster okay right that should make sense so that just being water-based right. um and one thing to note when you're painting sorry i didn't do a great job cleaning this up when you're painting, it's good to get a small, like, 16th inch bead of your paint up onto the window itself. Oh, right. Okay. So that kind of ties the glazing and the paint in and um, stops any water or condensation that might be on there from getting behind the glazing. Okay, that makes and sense. And then getting into the wood and swelling up the, the frame. Okay. So, all right. Um, so now. Should we put the, we'll talk a little about sash cords and um, put our window back together? Or, um, let's talk a little bit about sash cords, but we, um, I think we're running out of time. So let's, right. let's talk a little bit about what we'd need to do for the sash cords and then we can put the window back after. Okay. After class. After class, if that's all right. All right. So it looks like you, I don't know, we're okay. We're over here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do this. Um, so sash cord is a special right size thickness of um, of uh, rope that you're going to use for your um, attaching your windows to the pulleys or okay. to the weights. So um, I don't know. Where did you guys buy your sash cord? I don't remember. I'm okay. guessing it was probably one of the big box stores. But yep. I don't know. So it's, it's available still around mm -hmm. um, uh, that you can get most places. Um, there are certain knots that I don't think we're going to go into tonight because we didn't practice our knot tying. Um, but that, you can go into it if you'd like, but I, I don't know them. So um, I don't know if we've got this. That, Whoa, sorry. Here we go. All right. This is the there's a special loop knot for tying your weight on. Right. Because it would be really disappointing to get this tied, close things up and have it come loose. You this a large clunk right in your wall right and you're, so, and you're back starting over again right so there is this is a specialty knot and then also this and then the knot that goes into the um into the window itself is just a standard i don't know hand over knot it just needs to be big enough to fit into your window groove okay so and then these other these you can see that you want to measure um, uh, your the the length of your cord. I don't remember the. Um, there's a formula for. I think it's the the. Oh, is it the length of the window or the of the sash itself? You're doing great, Sam. All Keep right. it up. So you can see that this this cord is the proper length, right? Okay. It's about the same as the sash. Okay. This one doesn't work. It's it's. Oh, it's too long. It's too long. Ah. Right. So it's not actually. And then we had helping. one that was too short. So we had right. we had examples of everything here. Right. And then okay. examples of what's too narrow. Right. So that and we too saw thin. what happened with the if you don't use sash cord, uh -huh. it gets off to the edge of the pulley and then it gets jammed in there and doesn't go up and down. Okay. So, but the length's good. Okay. So that almost hit the, the bottom sash and I wish we would have gotten that on, on video, but I'm glad we didn't. So I told you, I just haven't made enough mistakes to become an expert yet. So. Okay. We're still working on them right. though. All right. So, um, and then basically putting your window back together is the same as taking as what we did when we took it apart. Okay. So, so it's just reverse. Right. Putting the, um, sliding the upper sash in first, hooking the, the, you would hook this, the one pulley on the, on the parting bead that you didn't have first. 
and then hooking this one on, putting it against there, um, pulling it down, getting the parting bead in, and then once that's in, you would hook up the the, the lower sash, okay. um, get get the get that hooked in and put in, and then put on the stops. Okay, sounds so, great. There are like weather stripping pieces you can install in there. Okay, and maybe we can handle that on another. Uh, class where we're we can talk about that in weatherization. Yep. And um, I was thinking maybe we should offer this class again in another month or two, and we could do a we could do it two parts or do like an extended class um, to see like so we could get into all these other things as well because sure. it's a it's a big subject. It's right. not just something that you're going to do. And you boom, could boom, do boom, a whole class just painting windows, right? Oh, just right. how to like do the glazing and all the different steps of that, right? right? But most um, people aren't going to do that. They're not going to spend. Uh, most homeowners aren't going to aren't going to be that particular with their windows that they're right. Spending. They just want them to work. They just want them to work and, right. and to last a, a little while. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any closing thoughts, Sam? Um, I think old windows are great. Okay. They're um, already all the embody energy has already been spent uh, installing them. You can tune them up. Just want to move this over here so I don't drop any more weights on it. Okay. Um, you can tune them up so they're just as energy or as highly energy efficient as as new windows. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if we do the interior storm window class mm -hmm. and putting on an exterior storm window, they'll last you know another hundred years or however old the house was or however old the right. windows are. Already. Right. So they're made to be maintained. They're just um, they take a, a little bit more work than um, uh, a typical home repair project. So, but my understanding is they're going to last a lot longer than than any modern window. Right. So it so makes more the, sense to. Yeah. So if see, I know I know together. of people who replaced their windows 15 years ago with vinyl replacement windows, uh -huh. who are now replacing those windows right. because the vinyl has failed. And now they're re-replacement windows. Right. Re right. And the you know where they could have just repaired the the wood windows. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sam, for uh, joining us tonight, and thank you everyone at home for um, joining us online as well. Uh, we will try to get this class on the schedule again for uh, sometime in the coming months. We'll see when Sam has available, you know, some extra three, four days so that he could teach this class in Hopefully four I days. Can make, um, I'm just I can make some more mistakes by then and have uh, a few maybe. more ideas. So. Well, I think I think it would be fun also to have yeah. PJ or somebody like that come along and, and we could actually do some of PJ's windows and, um, you know, so that you could see it in, in an actual house or something like that, sure. do some videos. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Thanks everyone at home for joining us. Um, we will have another class next week, next Tuesday. I forget what it is. Um, and um, if there's something you would like to to have us offer, please uh, email it to the address coming across the bottom of your screen, or you can also put it in the comments and we'll eventually get those messages as well. Uh, we did go a little longer tonight than uh, we normally do, but hey, that's the way it is. We're okay with that, right? right. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening. Take care.